Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This afternoon, I'm going to be drinking and enjoying, hopefully, the Double Mountain Killer Juicy, Clearly Not Hazy, Fresh Hop IPA. So this is another of the, the Fresh Hop IPAs. This should be my fourth now. Um, I've had two, well, not four Fresh Hop IPAs. I've had four Fresh Hop beers now, this year. Um, two were from Tap, uh, one into a growler and one directly into my mouth, almost, via the glass. And then this is the second one that's been bottled or canned. Um, and my first Double Mountain, I've seen, I tasted a Double Mountain um, I can't remember which one it was. It wasn't the Killer Juicy. Um, when I was deciding which one to dispense into a growler for a get-together, but I chose against the Double Mountain and chose instead the, um, Fremont Field to Ferment that time. Well, I saw this one on the shelf at Total Wine and figured, what the heck, give it a try. So this has been bottled recently. I cannot read this label. It's it's a yellow label with like silver white or gray white lettering on it. Um, but I was able to check it with my camera and I believe it was early October. So within the last three weeks, <laughs> that's a really awkward color to print your date, especially for a beer that date is so important on. I've already mentioned the importance of drinking your fresh hot beers fresh. So I won't go into that again here, but just suffice to say, you want to drink them when they're young. They don't age well. Um, they don't keep very well, so you drink these, you keep them cold, and you drink them fresh. And so that's my goal here, is drink it fresh. Let's see. So being clearly not hazy, I assume that's a indication that this is a West Coast IPA, like the other uh, fresh hop that I've had, the Rubens, no, Black Ravens fresh hop. Um, but it certainly pours hazy, that's... Very easy. So I'm going to be comparing this to the the Black Raven Fresh Hop, simply because I'm drinking these the same day. That was probably four hours ago, um, five hours ago, five or six hours ago, um, and it was a Citra specific IPA. Um, this one doesn't have a statement of which hops were used in it. Um, but there's just going to be comparisons just because that's what's on my mind right now. And just a reminder, that was a very, being a citra focused beer that had a very nice gamut of orange and grapefruit flavors, both to the nose and to the flit taste. And it had a very, um, interesting creaminess as well that frankly, as it faded, that, that had really long legs. It lasted forever. I was still tasting it 10, 15 minutes later. And it had almost left a yogurt taste in my mouth, which was really, really interesting and not at all unpleasant. So that's what this, that was. And this... Doesn't really smell at all the same. This is a bit more tropical. I think they had to remind us that it wasn't hazy because it kind of smells like a mild hazy, to tell, the, to tell you the truth. Maybe some mango, some plum. There's a hint of like a, a lemongrass, not, not just a lemon, but like a lemongrass. Maybe some lime in there. That's interesting. This thing, this definitely smells more tropical, but not creamy. Hmm. There's some juiciness in there too, but it's not, it's not like apple juice. Um, Fruit punch? No, no, that's not right. Um, peach? Oh, this is gonna bug me now. There's some, it's, it might be pear juice. Interesting, it, it's, there's a, there's a fruity juiciness there as well. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, dive in. Peanut butter? What the heck? Okay. 
Bear with me here. Peanut butter at the beginning. Some interesting, complex, possibly even complicated, and maybe confused. Multiple layers of different things going on in the middle. And then peanut butter and almost burnt toast at the tail. It might not be burnt toast, it might be um, lemon rind. Kind of that, it, it's a, there's a, a bitter, a bitey bitterness. I wonder if they also use some dried hops in this, just as an additional ingredient. I, I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's the case, because you would not expect to be getting those darker or sharper notes from a pale malt. Um, if I were drinking a, a dark IPA, uh, Cascadian Dark Lager, there's another name for that that's less regionally um, limiting. I can't recall at the moment. But I would expect those dark burnt toast notes to come from the malt as it stands up to the hops. But with this, there's it's not that. It's going to be a pale ale. It's, it's pale malts, right? Pale. Pale color. Pale malts. Um with a lot of stuff going on. This, it's a tasty beer. It's not offensive. It's not unpleasant, but it feels a little more confused. There's a lot more going on. It's kind of a crazy beer. It's definitely juicy. I can see why they had to remind us that it's not a hazy, because it does drink a bit like a hazy that went past where it ought to have been, maybe, in some ways. But that weird peanut butter start... Hmm. Let's see if we can pick anything else out. Okay. Um, yes, definitely some mango. So there's mango to the nose, mango to the body. Um, there is grapefruit in there. Definitely. The, the finish, despite that kind of peanut butter mixed with lemon rind kind of finish, it still, it still feels clean. It's not, it's not an unpleasant thing. I'd, I'd be interested if, if I'm identifying something else as peanut butter, um, what, what, what compounds it is, or if there's something that's it's a mix that I'm not able to tell apart and together they taste like peanut butter. It's it's just very interesting. So this is straight from the fridge. As it warms, I think I'm picking up, picking up less of the peanut butter or maybe all the other flavors that are just, you know, kind of all over my mouth and tongue right now are erasing that or clarifying it, um, it, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I'm not sure that I would enjoy this quite so much as some of the more focused or single-minded beers. Um, this is a fun beer. It's definitely that. You drink it and you're thinking, what the heck is in my mouth right now? Um, and it's, and it all individually tastes pleasant and together it's, it's good. Um, but yeah, it's a good beer. It's a tasty beer. Just if I were picking out fresh hop IPAs out of the two that I've tried today, I would probably prefer Black Raven's fresh hop Citra. And their focus on a single hop, which allowed them to bring some clarity to the beer that this one, I think, lacks. Uh, so, on that note, I mean, how do you, how do you say it's not my preference without it sounding like I don't like it or it's bad? It's not bad. It's not that I don't like it. All right? So, only read what I'm saying. Only only hear what I'm saying and don't 
you know, hear words I didn't say. Just put it that way. Anyways, um, another very interesting, very interesting um, beer by Double Mountain. Um, I under so one of the other Double Mountains that I had, and I'll try to remember to stick a card up there, um, was the India Red Ale, the Crazy Crazy Red Sister, I think it was. No, the Crazy Red Sister was a Flanders Red, I think. That they had an IRA. They had an India Red Ale that I drank from them that I enjoyed quite a lot. So that was an amber malt with amber or red malt over hopped, you know, like a, like an IRA, but it was or IPA, but it was an IRA. Uh, they apparently create fresh fresh hop variants of that particular beer as well, and that would be really interesting, I think, to see how the how the fresh hops work together with a darker malt. Um, I think it would be a real, it would be a, an exercise for a, a skilled brewer to do, and I, I know they do it. Um, it would just be, I think it'd be very interesting, because I, I recall enjoying that IRA a decent amount. Um, anyways, <laughs> this has been Matthew, chewing the brew, enjoying Double Mountain's killer juicy, clearly not hazy, really long titles, killer juicy, clearly not hazy, fresh hop IPA. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.